Okay, and welcome back. Today we are going to be taking apart this really big TV. This is the Sony Vega TV. Now look at the logo here. A lot of people call this the Wega or Wega, but that's a V. Um, I'm going to be putting it in the title of both ways because it's become known as the Wega, but it's the Vega. If you look at the old commercials, you'll see that Sony is saying Vega. But this is, I think, a 65. I'll show on the back here. So it is either a 50 or a 65, going by the model number there. It's really big, so I'm thinking... 65 but it might be a 50 I don't know but the curious thing about this TV is I have two of them our main TV is exactly this TV and it works yeah, but it's inside the house and I saw somebody throwing this one away and I figured let's grab it for spare parts or who knows what and there might even be a chance that it works but it definitely does not. It has the classic, when you turn it on, you get the blinking red light, which probably means that the um, bulb is burned out. Now these were interesting TVs because they were kind of halfway between rear projection TVs and the newer flat panel LCD plasma TVs. So they're not quite as thick as a rear projection TV but they're still thick. Um, and I have no idea how they work, so the curiosity is pretty high here on how they work. So I got some screwdrivers out here. We're gonna take this thing completely apart and see what's in there. So let's get the case off. Okay, so I have removed the back panel and these two little panels there that were right there and on the other side. And so let me take this thing out of the way. And you can see what we got here. Got a nice subwoofer there. I'm definitely gonna keep that. And I uh, haven't located the other speakers yet. They must be forward facing. Here we have a cooling fan and another cooling fan and up here another cooling fan and um, well you know I'm just dying to know what's inside there let me open that up okay that appears to be a service port possibly for a diagnostic computer for a technician to work with. And here's where the uh, your cable card can go in. And over here, we've got the main guts of it, I think. And now I was hoping that the screen would come off. The I was I was thinking that this backing plate was going to come off get back far enough. There we go. And so I took all the screws off, including all the screws around the bottom of it, thinking it was going to lift up and off, but it looks as though the front of the screen wants to come off and it'll be leaving the back shell. So I just have a few more screws to get off down there, and I'm guessing the front of the screen will come forward. And then, you know what, while we're here, that appears to be where the bulb is, so let me open that up and show that. Okay, and so behind that plate, which broke when I took it off, is this other plate. So I have to go get some Allen wrenches and see what's behind there. Alright, yes, that was the bulb. 
And there's a look at the bulb. You know, I, I guess it's burnt out. But then when you look inside here, look at that neat thing in there. And you know, really, stuff like that. That looks really neat. It looks dirty too. So it's, I wonder if they were having a problem with the image on the screen. Anyway, we'll surely get that thing out of there. And we will continue dismantling. We'll get all these screws off the front. And then hopefully we can get a look behind the screen. Okay. Okay, so it's one of those situations where you have all the screws out. I really do. Um, but the case still doesn't come apart. But we can at least look in there for the time being. Eventually I'll get it apart. But we can stick the camera in there. And you can see that it is still a projection system. There's the back of the screen there. And right here is a mirror. And instead of three color guns, you just have this one one unknown thing. And um, basically everything's coming from that. And the bulb is what's giving it its light, but whatever's giving it its image is a mystery still. Never seen anything like this. And so I will continue to work on this and as you can see all those points there, those screws are out. There and right there, I have removed those screws and it's not separating, but it eventually will. So I'll work on this some more and the next scene hopefully is a better look at something. Okay, I think I'm onto something now. I found um, taking this front plate off, which is just holding the electronics for the on-off switch, uh, reveals another plate with more screws, but that plate up here on the top is hooked. It's hooked over the... Um, this is one big piece of plastic here, which is the whole screen. And that is hooked over there, that lip is on there. So this, this plate has to come off for this screen to come off. Aha! And so behind that plate, we have the projector. Boy, I'm really curious to see inside there. We'll definitely get that off of there and take, take a good look at that. But the screen should be completely free now, so let me get that off of there. Okay, so, a um, little bit unexpected, the whole screen assembly came up and off of the base. And uh, I believe that is the correct way that it's supposed to happen. Um, because, now, all of that, I wish I could put it back on for a second. All of, well you can see the line there. Right up there and around. and down. That was all obscured by here. This was pressing up against there. So you couldn't get to the back back of the screen. And that is where the other screws are. Four more screws. And so you weren't going to get the front of the screen off, no matter what, until you did this. Anyway, I've uh, kind of got what I'm after. So I'll be taking apart the base now and getting all those components out just for whatever reason. And I will certainly separate the screen now. Okay, finally we've got the screen separated and we've got our first look inside there. Now, it does appear to have a Fresnel pattern to it. The back 
layer is not a Fresnel lens, but uh, there's probably two or three layers in there. And uh, I'll get those apart and we'll see what we have. But uh, otherwise, you just got your speakers there. And this is a little component box just for those uh, TV controls. There. Uh, otherwise, a whole bunch of nothing. See how the focus gets all confused when trying to focus on Fresnel pattern? Look at that, it's a mess. And uh, the back here, inside there, let's see if I can get in there. You have these funny panels here. These are just like uh, vinyl. They're like vinyl stickers. They're weird. If you look here, and that's the other side of them, and that's sticky there. It's as though you can remove them if you wanted uh, sound pressure to go out the back. Or, I guess, I don't know. And then, of course, you got your big mirror there. And it is a real mirror. Uh, sometimes they are mylar over styrofoam. But yeah, a whole bunch of nothing in there. And that's that. Anyway, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to take all these components out and look at a lot of this stuff individually. So let's get to it. Okay, and moving right along, we're getting the components out of here. Almost all of them. Out of the back of the, of the base of the case there. Got the subwoofer out. I will be keeping that. Pretty neat. Pretty neat self-contained unit there. And cooling fan. I'll probably save that. Uh, the bulb there. I put that there because I was noticing that this board here seems to be the power to the bulb. Those cables went through front where the bulb plugged in right there and so that was a curiosity to me um, but otherwise the big main electronic whoops big main electronic box came out all in one piece and it is just a ton of circuit boards kind of neat circuit boards because they're contoured to the case but just a ton of circuit boards. Oh, and this was neat right here. This is an internal, I unplug that. That's an internal USB um, connected to that cable, which goes into the projector box, which I'm dying to get into. But uh, what it does, I don't know, but it, I was surprised to see it plugged in USB inside, plugged into the board right down in there uh, somewhere. But anyway, I haven't been able to get the projector box out yet. I think it might be screwed into the base, so I'm going to have to get these components out of the way and flip it up to see how on earth that comes out, but that will be next. Okay, I got it out. So the projector box is out. It, what, what, what it was it was held on right there in there. Three screws. I know there's four holes, but only three of them were holding screws. And they were way recessed back in there. Let's see, right in there. Look way down that shaft. And so you had to use a long handle screwdriver. To get those and so unscrew those three screws and the whole thing slid out so now we've got the projector box and this is where the neat stuff is I hope and we'll get stuff uh, out of there like that neat prismic prismatic that was right in front of the bulb get that out of there and see what on earth is in here. So, that'll be next. 
Okay, under the first plate here, you've just got three plug-ins. Kind of looks like a flux capacitor. But, you know, I got to imagine, I mean, I've taken apart the big three-gun rear projection TVs, and I've got to guess this is three colors, but I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. There's more screws there. We'll get that one off. Okay, now this plate is just basically, I don't know, but I'm going to have to, so to get this entire circuit board off, I'm going to have to unplug all three of these and then take the circuit board off. Okay, getting that out of the way reveals Okay, looking on the back of these, you see how it says GLRR and BR. So um, the B might be blue, the G might be green, the R might be red. And the other letters I don't know, but it might actually be the three colors. Anyway, we have exposed some more screws. And hopefully I'll be able to take the top of this box off and look down in there. So let's see what happens. Okay, I got a couple more covers off here. I wanted to show you a couple of things. This one here, this is the fan that was covering where the bulb went, the bo bulb box. And that little intake there is sucking all the hot air from the bulb away from the bulb through this tube and out. But look, it's completely clogged with dirt, and so it wasn't working the way it's supposed to. And that is probably why everything melted in there, because all that heat was building up. So that explains that. And okay, so looking under this big plate, get a look inside the projector box. And what we got is a whole bunch more covers. Okay. Well, I'll get started taking all those screws off. Okay, so now we are finally, finally getting into the good stuff. So this little box here, it just had the one single cover on it. And that is the part that we've seen before. Right there is where we were looking before. And we find that there are more than one filter there. So that actually, that first pane is just flat. And then the second one is prismatic. And that is followed by another one back here. Actually three more. Wow. And then a lens. And of course that is where the light is coming in from the bulb. And so then it enters into this chamber. Now, wait till you see this. Oh, why did I put it? I put it back for effect. And now I can see that I can't get it off again. Oh, here it comes. Okay, here we go. Look at that. And so... Light comes in here. There's a mirror on that wall, too. And then it has to go into the three areas. It bounces back into this one, into the blue, the blue whatever you call it. And then over here, it bounces into green. And then way over here, it finally makes it into red. 
And then the uh, cover plate also had these three little filters on it. Clearly got different tints to them. Just fantastic. And then, and so those slipped in right there. See those little slots there around that little box. And so that is where the actual picture is being put onto it. And then out that chute and up to the screen. Now, sure love to see inside that box. Got a couple of screws up there. Suppose I'll take those off and see what happens. I'd like to see in there. We'll see what happens. Aha, that did work. Just two little screws were holding that in. And so now we can look inside there. So there's the empty cavity for the three different colors and yeah let me pick this up that way we can show inside there better look at that Whoa. Okay, so that's the box. I'm amazed. Totally amazed. Okay, so then that's as far as we need to go on that. I guess what I'll do now is I will just take the different layers off the screen to see what we have there. And then we're done. I think we've made enough of a mess. Okay, so I have removed the screen from its frame and I'm seeing two pieces of plastic there or whatever it is. Whoop, I dropped it. Okay, so we have two layers there that they have taped together. And so I will remove all this tape. I've taken apart a few of these rear projection TVs. Usually there's two or three layers and uh, I did not expect to see a Fresno lens on this one, but we got one. And what's interesting is that I think it may be a spot lens because I'm feeling nothing on this side. So Fresno will be on the other side. And then usually if it's a linear, there will be straight lines etched on this side. And I'm not feeling anything. So this may be a spot lens. Let's find out. Okay, so here they are separated. Basically you have, this is the screen that you're used to being able to touch that would have been on the front and then the uh, Fresno lens beyond the back. And I have tested this out a little bit. The sun happens to be out and it appears to be more spot than linear but there is definitely some diffusing happening here. I mean, look, and this is really just for people who happen to know what all that is. See, normally, to make it a linear lens, they put these really light 
uh, parallel lines um, etched on there. And they are there. I can sort of feel them, but it's much lighter than normal. And so therefore, it's not like an oval focal point. It's more of a circular focal point. It will melt stuff and it will set things on fire, but not as intense as a full-blown spot lens. And it is, uh, it's, so it's like a dull circle, about three or four inches around, as opposed to the size of a quarter or a nickel. So, uh, yeah, it's a Fresno lens, and it is a spot lens, but it's a soft spot lens, is what you uh, got there. So that's what you find in the Sony Vega TV. Anyway, uh, I should get that out of the sun before it sets the ground on fire right behind it. Hold on one second. Okay, so now so I brought the lens over into the shade, and I will put it away for sure out of the sun. And so this is where I've been working all day, and that is the Sony Vega TV right there. And uh, some neat stuff in there. Got a few things that I can keep and play with, like this projector box. Just fascinating. Just totally fascinating. And other things, I'll just take this and that. I'll be throwing a lot of stuff away. But I'll have, uh, well, I've got a spare screen for my TV. As I said in the beginning of this, I have one of these TVs. And uh, mine works, although I'm definitely going to check that cooling fan to make sure that it's cooling and that my bulb isn't about to melt its case. Uh, anyway, I hope you got a kick out of this. I yeah, know it's a kind of a unique subject, but um, it's what I do. It's a hobby of mine. I'm not an engineer or a technician. Just enjoy doing this, and I hope you uh, liked it. Thanks for watching. And everybody have a good one.